The Australian Institute has found that more than one in three Australians have experienced online harassment. Internet trolling is an online behaviour that's characterised by aggressive and deliberate provocation of others. Trolls seek to provoke, upset and harm others through inflammatory messages and posts. According to Andre Obla, the CEO of the Online Hate Prevention Institution, trolling is a form of civil disobedience. It's a social activity that is antisocial, that is anti-society and which causes harm. He believes people that troll have no empathy for the victims. It's no different to bullying in a sense. Obla adds that people can use trolling as a way of compensating for a sense of disempowerment. It's people that may not have much influence in society at large, may not have much power, may feel that life is against them and they're just being pushed around by the winds of fate, but they get online, usually anonymously, and you know suddenly they can exercise this power and push other people around. There is now an urgent need to understand why people troll. Obla says in his experience, the main reason many people troll is out of boredom. They're doing it for their own entertainment. And we see this both with individuals and also groups of trolls. You end up with a social group whose activity is to go out and harass others. He says not enough is currently being done to prevent online trolling from occurring. E-safety now has provisions for cyberbullying against adults as well as children. So there are laws in place. I don't think they're enforced particularly effectively, but the resources aren't really there. Police often don't take it seriously, even when it's a large group of people trying to drive someone to suicide. Until there is an actual suicide attempt, until the worst happens, police regard it as just online activity. However, Andre Obla says that social media platforms are very limited when it comes to preventing online trolling. If they terminate the account, the person will just come back with a new account immediately. Cyber psychologist Avita March says trolling is becoming more frequent in society. The statistics have increased, so it used to previously be like a third of adults would have experienced online harassment, whereas now it's about 40% of Australians will experience harassment online at some point. She says this increase is leading towards establishing an understanding that nothing is wrong with this concerning behaviour. As this behaviour online becomes more normative, that increases people engaging in that behaviour. Trolling can cause significant harm and distress linked to physical and psychological effects, which can include disrupted sleep, lowered self-esteem, depression, self-harm and suicide. From a personality psychology perspective, Avita March has found that there are traits that explain why certain people would be more inclined to engage in trolling. People who enjoy harming others or causing others psychological or physical harm, and people who are perhaps quite callous, they lack a sense of personal responsibility, they might be quite impulsive, they have empathy deficit. March says people find it easier to troll online as a sense of disconnection exists from behind a screen. This means they aren't forced to take accountability for their actions. Visual anonymity seems to allow them to act on behaviour that they might previously have been inhibited in person. Evita March says more needs to be done on social media to prevent trolling. They certainly have a large role to play in trying to manage the behaviour. And today, they probably haven't done enough. Evita March strongly disagrees with the message that if you're online, then expect to be abused as it's putting the responsibility on the victim. Somebody who was the target of abuse, it's not their responsibility to change. Collectively, we are responsible to try and target and change the perpetrator's behaviour. March says, to reduce trolling, proper laws surrounding this behaviour need to be put in place so that it can be criminalised. I am all about creating legislation around people who behave in such a way online that they intend to harm or cause offence or to menace or harass others. If you're acting in a way that you're intending to harm others, that's not okay. That's abuse. There's a big difference between abuse and having an opinion. Former online troll Ahmed Solomon stopped trolling when he found out how serious the consequences can be. I stopped trolling because my friend told me, like, oh, this girl was getting bullied or was getting trolled online for, like, a year straight and no one's heard from her since and we found out she committed suicide. Research from the Australian Institute in 2019 estimates that online harassment and cyber hate costs $3.7 billion in health costs and loss of income.
Armin Solomon has himself experienced being trolled on the streaming platform Twitch. I was streaming a game called Apex, and I was in a tournament, and I had a thousand people watching, and there's one person came in which was known for trolling, and he said to me he was in my game, and I said, oh, okay, we'll meet up at whatever, and we'll have a 1v1, we'll just reverse each other. And I got there, and there was 20 people there, and they just jumped me in the game. I was trolled like that, but I had people come in there and post photos of me being really overweight, or me being really skinny, like the size of a needle. Avita March says victims of trolling need to emphasize their sense of control online. If you do also experience it, don't feel that you just have to be the helpless target. Block them, report them, don't accept behavior that's not acceptable. Andre Obel agrees and says action needs to be taken. When that sort of harassment is occurring and it's escalating, it's time to talk to eSafety. You know, we, we help people with that as well, the Online Hate Prevention Institute. You need to step forward and put a stop to it. This is Savannah Pocock, reporting for the UniRap.